Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise his holy name. The love of God. So the last video I made, it died. And I'm just going to really quickly go over what, what the internet connection missed on the love of God. Because that's what we need is we need the love of God to overcome. We need to love God and hate evil, the Bible says. Those who love the Lord hate evil. And so where I left off was Hebrews 12 talks about the love of God is to chasten those he loves. And, and we see that in Revelation 3, 16, I believe. And so Hebrews 12 is the love of God that is chastening us. And it says in Hebrews 12, if we endure chastening. So if we continue to endure with God while he's chasing us, correcting us by the word of God, it says, then we are sons indeed. But if we despise the chastening of the Lord, we are bastards. So what that means is that if we're not being correctable by the word of God, if we're not abiding in Jesus and his words, if we're leaving leaving sound doctrine, like the Bible says that in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and 4, perilous times will come and it gives us the example of the last days reprobation. The last days men will be lovers of self. They're, they're not going to be into the word of God. They were going to have a form of godliness, but deny the power they're in. It says from such turn away from not to even fellowship with them who are not walking uprightly with the word of God. And then we see that in 2 Timothy chapter 4, we see that men will not endure sound doctrine, but will heap up for themselves teachers who will preach to their itching ears, and they will turn away from the truth and turn aside to myths. And in 1 Timothy chapter 4, we see that the Holy Spirit expressly states that some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils and having their conscience seared as with a hot iron. And the fruit that we see is they speak lies and hypocrisy. And so we see that to be chastened by the Lord, it says in Revelation, I believe 316, that God chastens those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And so we're supposed to be able to be conformed into the image of Christ by being chastened by the Lord. He is he chastens those he loves. And if we endure that chastening, that correction, that refining fire, then we are children of the Lord indeed. It says we're sons indeed, sons and daughters. But if we despise it, then we are bastards, meaning that you're cut off. And I went into John 15 on how Jesus preached that if we abide in him, we will bear much fruit. Apart from him, we can bear no fruit. We can do nothing. If we abide in him, we're going to bear much fruit. And what do we see in John 15? We see that every branch that does not bear fruit, the Father cuts off and throws into the fire. So that's a picture of not uh, being chastened, not bearing fruit. And that's a picture of that. And then it says in John 15 that the Father purges all who are in Jesus on the vine. We are the branches. He purges. What does that mean? He chastens. I chasten those I love. He purges. He refines with fire. That why? So we will bear more fruit. So that it will be fruit that remains, the Bible talks about. That we are supposed to have fruit that goes into everlasting life. And in 1 John, it talks about how if the word of God abides in you to the end, is what it's saying at the end of 1 John. And we see that 1 John 1, that God is light and in him is no darkness. If we say we know him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. The truth is not in us when we're walking in darkness. We're misrepresenting Jesus. And so that's what it's saying, that we have to walk in the light even as he is in the light. He is the light. we got to walk in the light with him, and then we have fellowship one with another. So we got to be walking in the light. we got to be abiding in the doctrine of Christ. And then if we're doing that, we're in the Spirit of God, we're sons of God, and we have fellowship one with another because we're all doing the same thing. The Bible talks about speaking the same thing. Do not have divisions among you. All speak the Word of God in 1 Corinthians. And so we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, and that's what that's what we see in the scriptures. And that's how we get corrected. The love of God corrects us away from sin and away from any false teaching, that we would have spiritual ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, is what Jesus is talking about. So we got the Hebrews 12, we got the John 15, and the love of God is that we would be persecuted for righteousness' sake. That's what it says in John 15, that if we're abiding in Jesus, we're going to bear much fruit. And then Jesus talks about how he testifies that the whole works of the world are evil. And that's why the world hates Jesus. Okay. And then he says that we are not above him. 
in John 15, and that if they've uh, persecuted him, they're going to persecute us. So part of the chastening, part of the um, coming out of um, sin is that you're no longer partnering with it. And now you're going to get persecuted for preaching the very words of Jesus. So praise God. Um, so Hebrews 12 is very clear that God is going to shake everything to see what is built on Christ. If it's not built on Christ, it's going to fall away in these last days. And in your walk with, with God, your, 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 your walk with God has to be following Jesus, has to be abiding in the word. You have to uh, receive sound doctrine. You have to overcome sin. And you do that because you love what Christ did for you. You love that God gave us Jesus who never sinned and went to the cross for us. And that's what I was preaching on is that that's how we overcome. We see how Jesus overcame. That's what it talks about in 1 Peter 4. Is it saying that as Christ suffered for us, means to suffer also that we would cease from sin. It says those who suffer in the flesh cease from sin because you hate the sin. You don't like the party life. You, you know that it's leading people to hell. You don't, the drugs are leading people to hell. Um, False Christianity is... Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It came back on. Just drove through a hard place. So, yeah. So then Jesus is showing us all of this. And we see in Matthew 13, where Jesus is showing us that there is the word that's preached. And we can hear it four different ways. We can hear it and not believe it. Okay, that's the first way. Matthew 13. We can hear it and believe it but not endure tribulation and persecution for the word, which is Jesus. So that was me a long time ago when I was a fake Christian, when I, you know, went through church, was baptized, but wasn't walking for the Lord, wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit to overcome sin. So that was the number two. I knew that one was showing me that I wasn't in right standing with God. That's why I preach this so much. And because it's the parables that shows us what the kingdom of God is like. And that's what we're called to do is preach the kingdom of God. We're called to preach what Jesus preached and give them exactly what Jesus preached. That's how we're abiding in the word. That's how we're abiding in sound doctrine. That's how we're knowing where we're, where we're at with the Lord. So Matthew 13 talks about, you can hear it, not believe it. You can hear it, but not deal, not be willing to suffer for Christ as Christ suffered. And you'd rather suffer for the world and do the worldly things. I knew that was me when I wasn't walking with the Lord. So the, the, praise God that these scriptures will find out where you're at. That's why it says the word of God is active and alive. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It's piercing through soul and spirit. It's dividing everything. And it's reading our thoughts and heart, it says in Hebrews 4.12. So that's why we trust the word to go forth and perform what it's intended to do, Isaiah 55. And so the third way you can hear the word of God is you can make it further. And this is what a lot of the church doesn't preach and warn on. You can make it even further. But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke it out. What happens if there's no fruit? Go to John 15. If the branch does not bear fruit, the father takes it off and throws it in the fire. Okay, so that's what the, the gospel is, is that you are supposed to be a child of God bearing fruit that's going to endure tribulation, persecution, that's going to overcome this deceitfulness of riches, the love of money, and all of these things that will choke you out from bearing fruit for, for God's kingdom. Okay, so then we see Hebrews 12 tell you the same thing. We see John 15 show you that. We see that uh, John 3, 16, that Jesus, behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Buy from Jesus gold tried in the fire. We see the parables of Matthew 25, where we see 10 virgins. Five are considered wise and five are considered foolish. The wise ones had their oil in their lamps. They were ready for the return of Christ. The foolish ones were also wanting to see the return of Christ. This is a fearful warning. So the five that were foolish did not have oil in their lamps. They weren't buying from Jesus and they were, they were worldly. That's what it's showing you a picture of. So when Jesus returns, what happens? The five foolish ones that don't have any oil, they come and they say, Master, let us in. And Jesus says, I don't know you. So this is showing you a picture of people who think they're okay with God, who are not ready. They're not buying from Jesus. They're, they're not, they're just, they're just not ready. Okay. So we see that we see Matthew 13, talk about tares that are sown in with the children of God. The tares are the sons of the wicked one. It says they're children of Satan. We see all that picture in first John, 
By this, little children, we know who is of God. He was practicing righteousness, as righteous even as he is righteous. He who goes on practicing sin is of his father, the devil. And so this can be sown into churches that they're tares. And what happens at the end of the age? Jesus sends out his holy angels to reap out of his kingdom those who offend and those who are practicing sin. That's getting reaped out of his kingdom, my friends. And you see Jesus talk about that in Matthew 7, where he's talking, narrow is the way and straight is the gate and few there be that find it. There's fewer people going the narrow path. That's the gospel. That's what we're supposed to be preaching so that people will know that, hey, I'm not walking down that narrow path. I'm walking the bar life. I'm walking the worldly life. I'm, I'm fornicating. I'm doing all these things that the Bible says does not inherit the kingdom of God. So I'm actually on the wide path. This is why we need to preach this. Okay, so the narrow path, Jesus said, is few going there. But the wide path that leads to destruction, many are going there with. And Jesus talks about the fruit. You'll know them by their fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So that's how we see if a person is really walking with God, if they're abiding in the word of God, they're living holy, and they're sanctified, and they have a love for the brethren. So God's love is Jesus dying on the cross, resurrecting on the third day, and now we're supposed to love like Jesus. We're supposed to love the brethren. And this is how we overcome. This is how uh, people will know that ye are my disciples if you love one another, the brethren, the, the true followers of Christ. So it's not saying that you love the world. I don't know if the if it got cut out when I was preaching this about First John. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are of the world, neither the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. These are not of the Father. So that's what we're not supposed to love. Okay, we're supposed to love the truth, the, the word of God. We're supposed to love holiness. We're supposed to love uh, being converted, uh, converted from a fallen, from being fallen and against God into a child of God. The Bible talks about two kinds of people, slaves of sin and slaves of righteousness. So the love of God is to warn us and tell us of all these things. Matthew 7 warns about the judgment where many are going to say in that day, Lord, Lord, we did all these things. We prophesied. We cast out devils. We did all these miracles in your name. And they, Jesus said they were not doing the will of the Father. They were practicing sin. Depart. I never knew you. Ezekiel 18 talks about if a righteous man be righteous his whole life and turns and ends in wickedness, all his righteousness is forgotten. But if a wicked man does wickedness all his life and then turns and does what the Lord wants, basically is what it's saying right there and does righteousness, all his wickedness is forgotten. And the prophet Ezekiel had to have his face like flint to go out there and preach. God said, make your face like flint. These are a stubborn people. They're not hearing and they're blind. Same thing with Jeremiah. And what did they say to Ezekiel? They said, God's ways aren't fair, that that could be the case. And God says, isn't it my way? Isn't it your ways that are unfair? So the love of God is to warn. Jesus warned about hell 42 times. So that is the love of God. He demonstrated it in giving us his only begotten son, dying a torturous death on a cross, that we would follow him. That's what Jesus said, follow him, follow him. Praise God. Then we see Revelation chapter two and three. And we see that love of God is Jesus warning the churches. Seven churches. The first church, Ephesus, street preachers. I know your works, that you've labored for my namesake, that you can't bear those who are evil, that you've tested those who claim their apostles and found them to be liars. But this I have against you, that you forgot your first love. Repent and do the first works, or else I will move the candlestick. To those who overcome, I will grant to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of my God. The tree of life in the book of Genesis was, was um, guarded by cherubim after they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is like basically drugs, wanting to be your own God, wanting to know things, um, you know, doing drugs to try to find the truth and stuff like that. Being, trying to be a God. That's what the devil tempted Eve with. She ate the forbidden fruit. Uh, Adam ate and we saw the tree of life guarded by cherubim and, and holy angels. Now we see this tree of life in the book of Revelation that those who overcome and Ephesus were street preachers and they still had to overcome. So they had doctrine. They were rebuking false apostles. They were laboring for the name of Jesus, but they forgot their first love. Maybe their heart grew cold. 
Maybe they forgot how much Jesus rescued them from and they weren't ministering and laboring and being long suffering enough. We don't know. But what we do know is if this is for you, you're going to know that I need to come back to my first love. And Jesus said to those who overcome, they will eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of my God. So there's a first church that Jesus is judging, Ephesus, known street preachers, having doctrine right. So that's the love of God that we see that today. The next church, Smyrna, you think you're poor, but thou art rich. Hold fast. Let no one take your crown. The devil's going to cast some of you into prison 10 days. Be faithful even unto the death. To him who overcomes, you will not taste the second death. This labor, this church was thought they were poor, but they were rich. They were being persecuted. It's a picture of a time where we still might be coming into where people are going to be thrown in jail 10 days, be faithful unto the death. Do not deny the name of Jesus during that mark of the beast time, during this time right now where people are denying Jesus by their works, by their words. And to this group, they have to abide all the way unto death. Okay, my friends, that's the love of God to give us these warnings so that we can see all the false teaching in the churches that aren't abiding in this doctrine of Christ and how Jesus is giving us the word of truth uh, that sets us free. John 8, 31, Jesus says, if you abide in my word, then you're my disciples indeed. That word abide means to continue with, to continue in his word. And if you do that, you're gonna know the truth and the truth will set you free. You're going to have eyes to see. You're going to have ears to hear what is sound doctrine. Okay. And, uh, and then, it, and then he says, the slave will not abide in the house of the Lord forever, but whom the son sets free is free indeed. And the religious people came against Jesus preaching that word right there, just like we see it now, where the religious people come against the preaching and they don't have ears to hear. And what Jesus said, they told Jesus, we've never been slaves. We're children of Abraham. And that's where we see Jesus say that, Whomever is a servant of sin is a slave of sin. Okay, now that picture right there that the slave will not abide in the house of the Lord forever is a picture that you've got to overcome sin. In Hebrews, we see that if we willfully go on sinning after, you know, after we've received this, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. So we're supposed to be called overcomers. It's in fact, that's what the Bible says so many times in Revelation. He who overcomes, he who overcomes. Okay, so the third church, Pergamos, Jesus says, the seed of Satan's in there and the doctrine of Balaam. Okay, the doctrine of Balaam is a last day's doctrine where we see it warned in Jude. We see it warned in uh, Second Peter 2. And now we see it warned right there. So we have the seed of Satan and the doctrine of Balaam. And Jesus points to his faithful martyr, Antipas. And he says to those who overcome that he will give them hidden manna you know, food from heaven, like God fed him in the old Testament and he will write on him a new name and in a, a stone. And so we see the way of Balaam. What is the way of Balaam? Balaam spoke for God. He only uttered things that God had him utter. Yet the Moabite king made him uh, want the riches of this world, made him want things by promising him money. So this last day's doctrine is where churches start off well, they, they grow a huge ministry and then they join with things they're not supposed to join, leading the flock into sin. That's what Balaam did is he he figured out a way to speak for God, but still lead people into sin. Once saved, always saved. Even though people are going to be once saved, always saved, who are going to endure all the way to the end. God did not have us preach that doctrine. Jesus said, count the cost all the way to the end in Luke 14. So this is a man-made doctrine that is bringing people into thinking they can go on sinning, yet God judged the people in the Old Testament for fornication, um, for rebellion of Korah, and the way of Balaam, the madness of the prophet is mentioned. So the way of Balaam is is big in these last days. A church might be joining with with the uh the the big TV stuff. If it's off, if it's not following the doctrine of godliness and Jesus like what's that Mormon one on TV? There's a, like a Mormon influenced one where pastors are taking photographs with with the Mormon Jesus, who who is obviously not not preaching the gospel of Jesus. Okay, well, there's so many other cases where people are being given over to to fame. That's what Balaam is: is he wanted the fame? the 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 Moabite king sent out more famous delegation, offering him riches, and he would say, "Well, I can't go beyond what the Lord tells me." 
and he would speak for the Lord. So he's a prophet. He spoke for the Lord, yet he still wanted the fame and the money. And that's what we're warned about in 2 Peter 2, Jude, and Revelation chapter 2. Okay, the next church, the love of God, where Jesus is showing us how he's judging the churches, Thyatira, they, their works are, are growing. Their charity is growing. Their last are better than the first. But this I have against you that you suffer that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess to teach and lead kids into sexual sin and food sacrifice to idols. I gave her space to repent. She repented not. Okay. And to as many as have not this doctrine, I'll put on you no other burden. Um, to those who have this doctrine, I will throw the children into a sick bed and kill the children. That's what Jesus is saying about this doctrine. Jezebel didn't repent. This doctrine, what did Jesus say about? He said it knows the depths of Satan as they speak. So this doctrine is, is also they, Jezebel, those who don't repent from this. Okay, to those who repent from this or do not have this doctrine and overcome all the way to the end, Jesus says, I will let you rule over the nations, even as I overcame and broke everything to shivers, and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The next church of Sardis, this church, Jesus says, you think you're alive, but thou art dead. This church could be the one, the mega churches with the light shows, the laser beams, the smoke machines, all of this stuff going on. They've got so many people in there, yet they're dead, Jesus is saying. And Jesus says there's only a few walking in white. Jesus says, strengthen the things that remain. I have not found your works perfect before my God. And then he says, remember the word that's been handed down for, for you. And then he says to those who overcome, I will not blot out the name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the father about you. So how do you overcome? Oh, Jesus said it right there by preaching his words, because in the gospels, Jesus says, anyone who is ashamed of me and my words, him, I will be ashamed of when I return in the glory of the holy angels. Jesus also says, um, that whoever denies me before men, I will deny before the Father. Whoever speaks of me before men, I will speak to the Father. So that's what it's saying is he's going to speak to the Father about you if you start walking in white, strengthen the things that remain, do the will of the Father, just like we see Jesus telling us to do, commanding us to do, and then he will speak to the Father about you and you will not have your name blotted out of the book of life. So the love of God is to warn. Revelation says your name can be blotted out of the book of life. That passage right there points to it being possible. Revelation 22, 18 through 19, I believe it is, or 20, says if you add to the prophecies of this book, God's going to give you the plagues so that you will let go of it and repent. What did he, What are the plagues? Well, pestilences. Look at the Old Testament. Um, he will give you over to your false teaching and he will give you the plagues and you will have to see that God's chastening you. Okay, now if anybody subtracts from it, pulls away from it, you will have your name pulled out of the book of life. Okay, so there's a serious warning right there. We see the warnings in Hebrews. We see the warnings there that we we have to overcome. We have to walk in white. We have to be in sound doctrine. We have to see that, oh, the love of God is Jesus showing us what sound doctrine is and rebuking all this other false doctrine so that we would be upright and walk in the truth, walk in, walk in uh, holiness, believe all the word of God. Revelation chapter 3 the next one, Philadelphia, he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. So Jesus is the door. He's the only one that opens the door and shuts doors. We, that's why we follow him. Okay. Jesus says, I know your works that you've labored, kept the patience, have not denied my name and have a little strength. Behold, I will cast those who say they're Jews, but are the synagogue of Satan before your feet so that they will know that I have loved thee. It's another picture of judgment. If you have eyes to see that there is that reaping in Matthew 13, uh, 41 through 43, there's the reaping of the holy angels coming out to reap out of God's kingdom, everything that offends and practices sin. Just like Matthew 7, uh, 21 through 23, those who are being cast away are those who were practicing sin, even though they were claiming they were doing all these works and they might've been by faith because the word of God is by faith. But yet if you turn and start living in sin, remember Ezekiel 18 says, all your righteousness is forgotten. Okay, so this church was abiding in everything. They were laboring. They were doing all these things. And this church out of seven is being told that they're going to be protected from the hour that's going to come try the whole world. That final testing. Read Hebrews 12, the great shaking. Read Isaiah 24. The whole earth is going to shake like a, like a, like a drunken, like drunken. 
It's going to shake because God is uh, removing everything that is not held to him. That's what the last days is all about. And the judgments of God are all about is what is abiding in Jesus. What is going to endure to the end? Okay, so this church in Revelation, Philadelphia, two churches that weren't really rebuked, but they still were told to overcome. This is not a pre-tribulation church, in which a lot of the pre-tribulation false teachers, because it's a false teaching, saying that we're not going to endure this stuff. Well, that's how all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, says the Bible. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus. So persecution, read uh, first, no, I'm sorry, second Thessalonians chapter one, the manifold uh, tribulations and persecutions that you suffer are proving that you're sons of God. And then Christ comes back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who know not God or obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. All of this all fits together. I'm so in love with the Lord and his word and the love of God is to warn his people, to warn his people about these judgments. Okay, so this this church in particular right here, they're not going to endure. They're going to be protected is what I get from this. But it's not a pre-tribulation rapture verse because he says um, to, to, the, to those who overcome, I will make you a pillar, which is in the which is in New Jerusalem, which is going to come down from heaven. OK, so they're told to still overcome. How do you overcome if you're raptured? Basic. Be converted like a little child and just receive it like a little child and be able to rebuke these false pastors that have everything a lot right, but they're telling you you're not going to have to go through these things that are coming upon us right now. Have, give them the scriptures. Praise God. So the Laodicean church, this is the one where they think they're rich. And Jesus says, you think you're rich, but you're actually poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. Jesus says, I counsel you to buy from Jesus gold tried in the fire that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eye salve to see. Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. And then he says to those who overcome, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. How did Jesus overcome? He overcame by going to the cross. He saw what was, he knew what was coming. He said, Father, take this cup for me. He sweated blood. He knew he was going to be punched in the face. He knew he was going to be whipped, marred beyond human recognition, that he would be crucified. And he saw it and he walked toward it for the love that he has for everyone, that they would hate their sin and love him for doing that. He rose on the third day. And that's the love of God, my friends. And Jesus says the love of God is he chastens those he loves. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. And that's how we overcome. We hate that sin. That, that can beset us. We hate false teaching that can lead people into a false security. And we believe every word of God. Praise the Lord. Sorry that the uh, other preaching didn't hold all this. This was the second half of it. Praise God. Praise God.